Hi there, welcome to No Nonsense Whiskey. My name's Vin Pierre, and on today's episode, we're checking out a Tom and Tool. And this one here came from me directly from the guys at Angus Dundee, so thanks very much for them sending this over for review. And uh, we've got something which I'm considering quite nice up front. Now, I will say at time of recording, uh, I think this is important to say at the start, I've seen it on Master of Malt for much, much less than its RRP of around 85 quid. It's been going for 70 quid. Now, I can't guarantee that when you watch this video, I can't guarantee it's still available, but if that piques your interest right away, there's a link in the description below that you can go and check out. Now, today then, we have a Tom & Tall 14-year-old cognac cask finish. So that's a limited edition from 2009, it's saying on the front here. The cool thing about this is that it's a numbered bottle, which is a bit odd, I think, for the amount of bottles there are. There's 8,082 bottles of this in existence, and right now I've got bottle 7,103. But part of the whole process is that you're going to get a bottle that's individually numbered. They didn't need to do that, but they're doing it. Now, the reason why I think this kind of series is cool, there's a few of these now, these age-stated Tom and Tools that are like um, limited edition cask finishes. I've got another one coming up in a couple of weeks as well, which will be interesting nonetheless as well. Now they've done a couple of tiers of this, you know, obviously they've got this, their age stated core range. This is the gentle dram we're talking about now. So really, you know, they're, they're roughly about like there was 40 to 46%, which, you know, this is a 46er. Now they also recently did this small batch series where they were messing around with cask finishes all at 40%. So again, really hitting that gentle dram notes. And although I enjoy those whiskies, all I can ever think about is, God, I wish this was 46% or, you know, higher if possible. So for them to hit the, you know, the non-chill filtered, the natural coloured, the 46% and the age stated, it's all pretty good stuff. And, you know, they're, they're really hitting a good price point as well. You know, price points, as we know, are going up and up and up and up and up. So to get a, a 14 year old single malt scotch for, you know, even sub, you know, sub 100 quid these days is pretty good. But uh, to hit, be hitting those kind of 70 quid, those 80 quid uh, price points, I think it's worth a shot. But yeah, so this one here is a cognac finish. So I guess it, it's been aged in uh, refill bourbon barrels, judging by the colour of this thing. And if we show this up again, you know, it's not particularly light uh, It's or particularly dark. It's like a golden colour. So I imagine that. And then I imagine it was um, a relatively short finishing period. But who knows? Finishing periods could be three months, six months, two years, whatever. Um, so they, they haven't mentioned how long that is exactly. So it doesn't really matter, I don't think. But let's get on to the actual whiskey and see what we've got. Again, we can talk about colour for a change, which is amazing. We do like talking about colour when we can, but I uh, basically never bring it up unless it says specifically on the bottle or the box that it's um, no non-chill filtered natural colour, that sort of thing. If it isn't on there, you kind of got to assume that it is. Because I always think, I mean, getting... Off, on topic, off topic now is that if it doesn't say it on the label, and it it is natural color, I kind of think that's a missed opportunity. If you've if you've got your bottle and it is natural color, just put it on the label. It, it's not that difficult to include it on the label somewhere, and we love to read that sort of thing. We don't like to have to scour the internet to try and find that information out. So yeah, all right, looks good. Let's get onto the nose then and see what we got. Now for me, it's got a um. A really kind of it's got a classic nose that will fit right in with any kind of uh, fan of like scotch whiskey basically if you're into that kind of like ex bourbon vibe this is straight up that street you know the cognac cask in this isn't overtaking too much so on the nose we're getting lots of vanillas lots of honeys those sorts of things now I get in my tasting notes I couldn't really decide I, I was deciding between sort of jammy notes and kind of baked goods and in the end, I've rounded it all together as Victoria sponge cake, you know, so you're talking, if you don't know what that is, that's, um, you know, some some cake, some jam and some cream, all that kind of mixed together, that kind of vibe. With a little bit of icing sugar on top. That's what I'm smelling in this thing. Let's get onto the palette then. Mm -hmm. Now, oh, it's definitely, it's definitely on the gentle side of things. The 46% is well within the wheelhouse of most whiskey drinkers. The palate is uh, replicating the nose quite well. Lots more of those kind of sweet, those vanillas, those honeys. For me, it extends on from those into a little bit more kind of fudge territory. It's a bit kind of creamy, a bit more luxurious. There's some ginger spices on there. And the key thing I'm keen to impress with this thing is that it, again, tastes like baked goods, you know. 
pick your favourite childhood dessert that is including those kind of things, you know, kind of cake or, you know, the kind of buttery biscuit bases and that sort of thing. Pick your favourite childhood dessert and it's probably going to match with that somewhere. The layers on this thing is massive. I think probably every sip you'd get something different, every person would get something different depending on your previous experiences. Here's something else that's cool, the finish. Now usually my tasting notes with finish tends to be like it was sweet up front and then that sours off and that's not necessarily a bad thing. It tends to be something that I say quite regularly on videos because that's a very common finish. This one here surprises me because yes, all right, it's sweet and baked goods up front but it seems to retain that sweetness all throughout the finish. It doesn't sour out, doesn't get kind of like, you know, less interesting as it goes along. It just keeps going. It's nice and sweet. And even now, even though after the flavour is all gone, I'm getting a kind of little jammy notes here and there on my tongue, even after that sip that was like a minute or so ago, which is fantastic. The finish isn't like overly huge. It's probably medium. So it's, you know, whatever time frame you would classify that as. I tend to go with kind of like, you know, low, medium, long, that sort of thing. But it's medium, it's not overly long, but I wouldn't expect it to be any longer than that for a kind of an unpeated and 46 percenter. But it's it's just a tidy dram. And that's the thing that I love about this. You know, it's probably easy to overlook on a shelf. You know, it's got classic livery. You know, it's uh, it fits in quite nicely with lots of other kind of branded bottles. But actually, it's, it's pretty fantastic. And... Probably for the first time in my whole video career, I'll, I'll, I'll say things like, you know, 70, 80 quid isn't too bad. You know, that's just my my 2024 brain recalibrating to the new prices, I imagine. Um, because, you know, back when I started drinking whiskey, you know, 10 odd years ago, 10, 15 years ago, you'd have probably been able to get this a lot cheaper if it was out then. But those days are gone. So yeah, for especially the 70 quid that I mentioned earlier, an absolute bargain. And it's probably bob on for the 85 quid RRP. Uh, I wouldn't want to go much higher than that, so if you're abroad and you're struggling to get hold of this, then um, yeah, maybe don't do secondary or whatever, but 8,000 bottles are around, so maybe there's uh, a shot of it. But yeah, you don't even have to go in on this, this cognac cask. There's plenty of other choices to go to. I would just give them a chance because for me, I would overlook Tom and Tool a lot, I think, by accident, just because I've got so much choice these days. But um, to my detriment, to my detriment, really enjoying Tom and Tool at the moment. They're making some excellent quality stuff. Yep, as you can see, I'm hammering through this bottle. This is going to be um, not savoured. I'm going to drink this. I'm going to share it as it should be. It's one of those sessionable whiskies that I think just fits the bill right on the shelf. In that case, I'll say cheers to you and I'll see you again on more videos soon.